Hey folks, so as you may have seen in my install video, I did actually end up cutting one of the supports for this L, for the L shoulder button here. I haven't had any issues, as you can see my button still works perfectly fine. Uh, it is a little bit easier to press than it used to be, and R is quite a bit more clicky. I'm not 100% I'm not sure if it was like that beforehand, I don't recall. Um, but in my defense, when I was making the video, there weren't any actual published instructions at the time, or there might have been, and they were just like that very night published, and I hadn't seen them yet. Uh, but either way, if you did the same thing, or um, you didn't know any better, and you want to try to fix your button here, I'm gonna we're gonna try that out without having to start from scratch and reshell the console. So I've already taken out a couple of the screws just to try and speed this process up. Oops. But I still need to take out these two tri-point screws here. And I imagine whether your button works at all, or if it's just kind of sloppy, is dependent entirely on whether or not you are using aftermarket buttons and how well they fit, or, excuse me, or the uh, original buttons there. And in my case, I'm using the aftermarket ones. And again, I didn't have any issues, but just because, you know, works on my machine doesn't mean there isn't room for improvement there. So, here we go. Get that out of there. So the problem, if you recall, I'm not going to take the motherboard out, but... Oh, shit. I dropped the power switch. Whatever, I'll find that later. Um... When I was cutting in there, framing you fuck, I uh, cut off that whole wall there. Apparently you're supposed to leave just, you're supposed to cut the very top corner so that the screen can sit in, but you're supposed to leave enough so that this little spring bar on the button has something to push off of. As is right now, I think it either pushes against nothing or the screen. And in my case, it's pushing against nothing. It, it, it just it flies over the screen. So we're going to try and fix that. I had an idea earlier today, and the entirety of the fix we're going to perform with this pen here. Uh, brand doesn't matter. This is literally just something I had laying around. Um, it quite frankly looks like it's been run over or something. I don't know why I still had it, but thankfully I did. What matters is that it's one of these clicky pens. We don't need any of this pen except for this spring here. And if it's your only pen, I'm sorry. Hopefully we'll be able to salvage it because we're not using this whole spring, but we are using some of it. The idea is that this spring just so happens to fit over this button perfectly. I don't know how well you can see that, but the diameter matches up quite nicely. Um, if you're a mechanical keyboard fan, you probably got some extra switches laying around. I believe you can use the spring out of one of those, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll, uh, well, actually, you know what? I'll be right back. Let me go grab one and we'll find out together. Okay, so I just took part one of these knockoff Cherry MX clone blue switches. Grab the spring out of there. It looks a little bit too small, but you could totally make that work if you want. It fits over the button just fine. Um, in fact, if you have one of these, it's probably easier because I think you'd only have to cut this in half. But I'm going to try it with the pen spring first, and then we'll come back to that. So this pen spring, you obviously don't... well. Maybe it's not obvious. You don't want to use this whole thing, and uh, I'm going to stop playing with that because I lost my first pen spring doing that. But you really, you're going to want to cut it down. You just want a few coils here. I don't know how many that's going to be because if you take a look at the button here, it presses right up against there. So you, you don't have a whole lot to push off of, you know, to provide resistance. So I think just a little bit will be fine. So I'm going to cut this down with some heavy-duty wire cutters here. I'm going to cut 
There's the, uh, oh shoot, I don't think this is going to work for me. I'll try it out. I'll cut a little bit extra just in case. Alright. It's, there we go, okay. You don't want to use nail clippers or if you have them, your good flush cutters on this because you'll fuck them up. Ask me how I know. Don't. Don't ask me how I know. I already fucked up a, fucked up some good tools. Um, I'm going to put this back together so we can test it out. But, oh, real quick, one thing I'm going to do. Since this spring isn't doing anything, I'm going to remove it. On aftermarket buttons, it usually just pops right out. On OEM buttons, you might have to clip it, but that's why you got your uh, clippers there. So I'm going to take my spring, put it over the button, and try and get this in here. Make sure everything's still lined up. The rear shell back on. I accidentally bent one of the battery contacts at some point. There we go. So I'm going on the street. I'm going to put in the two screws in the shoulders here so we can test it out. and then the one in the battery compartment. Just to hold everything together. All right, so I can already tell you I need to trim more off that. That is entirely too stiff and it's now clicking. Part of the issue is there's so much at the bottom there. What I mean by at the bottom. There's like a few loops around just flat compressed spring. I'm going to try and cut that off. A wiser man than I might just take some spring from the middle of this coil. That If I can avoid it, I'm going to try to. So now I've got, what, like two and a half coils left? Try this out. Still stiffer than the other one. Maybe remove another half coil or something. But I'd say that works pretty darn good. Let me pop these screws in here so I can pop the batteries in. And just double check I don't fuck anything up. But I think that might be the ticket right there. Yeah, it's still a little bit uh, stiff, but it's no longer clicking. It's stiffer than I'd like, but but that's that'll do it. Let's remove a little bit more. Get it perfecto.
what I say? We'll just try this half coil at a time. All right. So now we're down to, if you want to count that, a whole two coils. I've already seen a problem with just two coils though, it's harder to get everything lined up properly. That or maybe I just got lucky the first time around. Oh, we'll skip that for a moment. Oh shit. Now it's together. Still a little bit stiff, but overall not bad. I'd say that's definitely doable. You, you could do the other side too, I suppose, if you want to get them feeling the same. No reason that won't work. Now, just because it's always good to have alternatives in case you weirdos don't have random office supplies, you can... Uh, salvage your pilfer um, but you have some mechanical keyboard switches you can get these springs out of here I'm assuming this is like a 70 gram switch or something it's out of this knockoff Otemu blue Cherry MX clone I, d ooh. I don't think we want to use this whole spring just because that is a lot to compress can't even compress the whole thing yeah so I'm going to cut it in half. This one you probably can use your flush cutters on, but I'm still not going to, just in case. I can already tell you that was, uh, I think I need to cut off another couple coils here. Alright. So I'm just going to start at one coil. If I can, this thing is a pain in the butt. Not going on straight. There we go. Oh, that feels so much better. Oh my goodness. That actually feels almost stock. I'd say, um, yeah, I'm just going to ship it, man. So that's my verdict there. If you have an old keyboard, mechanical keyboard switch spring, just pop your switch open, cut it in half, cut off an extra coil, and uh, use that spring there. I'll put the rest of the screws in later. Y'all don't need to sit here and watch me do that. 
Oh, see, here's something interesting. Now it's not working. I'm guessing, I'm guessing by the fact it starts in widescreen that this is constantly triggering down. Interesting. Dang, I thought we were done. Sorry, guys. I'm just as disappointed as you are. Of course, you have the foresight of being able to look at that progress bar. Oh yeah, that totally went in. Oops, sorry guys, I let that run over a little bit. Um, what I've done, I've opened up this last link a little bit to make it just a little bit wider. It's hard to see there, but all I did, I just stuck some pliers in there, give it a quick squeeze, to just give it a slightly larger radius. I'm going to stick that back on there. Stick this button in here and reassemble and then do all that over again. I will admit assembly is not nearly as straightforward. But I guess if you pay a little bit more attention during that initial install, you won't have to go through all this. Again, my button was working perfectly fine. I'm just doing this to give it a little bit more uh, resistance and to... Well, you know, I, I figure you have an idea, you should share it. Especially if it helps someone else out, you know? There we go. Absolutely perfect. So it's still kind of soft, uh, but I think such is life. I could order some... Um... See, that's the weird thing about these mechanical keyboard nerds, man. There's stores, all sorts of boutique stores. I could order super heavy springs and try one of those out. But honestly, I think this will be good enough for now. So, assuming this came with a 70 gram spring, which I, I don't I don't know, um, half that logic dictates is going to be about 35. I cut off a link, so we'll call it somewhere around 30. Um, I'm thinking a heavier spring would be a little bit better, maybe 50 to 60. So if you can order 100 gram springs, then that would probably be ideal. Otherwise, you can try a uh, clicky pen here. I'm going to try and put mine back together. I just stretched out the spring a little. So I'm not going to use it. But I'll throw it back in my drawer for a future project or something. I don't know. Still writes. Still clicks fine. So what the hell. Why not? And, um... Well, otherwise, if you guys have any suggestions on how to improve this, or if this helps you out, let me know. I'm always looking for feedback, even if I, uh, well, as long as it's constructive, man, I'll take anything I can get. Um, but otherwise, you guys have yourself an excellent evening, and I'll see you next time.